Following their enforced two-year absence from the scene due to legal wranglings, Germany's Halloween have returned with their fourth studio album, curiously entitled Pink Bubbles Go Ape. The band invited MXS down to London's Rainbow Theatre to take a behind-the-scenes look at the filming of their new video. I think since the last album and the new one, there's a very big gap in between. So we used the time to relax, think about things, writing songs and everything, but basically we had to, you know, had to, had to get things straight, you know, on the management side, record company side, things like that. And the magazines and everybody else used the time for rumors and stuff like that. Nothing is true. It's all lies. All lies. <clears throat> and uh, we're happy to be back, actually. You know, the problems the band went through on the personal side, on the business side, it's, it's very good for creative, to be creative, for, for creative indeed. For creative, yeah. It's very good, actually, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because, creative you know, when you're frustrated or something like that, you can, it's a strength. It's, it's, it's not, it's, you, can, you can use it positive. <laughs> A neg negative vibe. You can, you can put it in a song, and in the end, you can have a very, very, very strong attitude that song in the end. So we did that. The album title is Which Blue Quarters Go Mad. No. No, Fat Pebbles Go Grape. No, it's Pink Bubbles Go Ape. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Yeah, Pink Bubbles Go Ape. And the story behind that was that what Mike and mean? I. Well, what it means? I don't know what it means. <laughs> I mean, it means quite a lot. It means, you know, basically, it means, um, well, Pink bubbles go away, but it could also mean uh, that uh, illusions blow up, or um, yeah, things like that. And uh, I was just thinking about it and felt like <clears throat> we don't want to do that, this typical heavy metal. metal stuff again. It's fucking boring. So I and, thought we were and heavy I, metal. And, and, uh, I was supposed to be a pop group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I thought about it. it must be something really stupid. Something really stupid, something like pink bubbles or anything like that. And then he said, hey, that's a good idea. Uh, wait, what good. the next one will be called? Yeah, but, but it's not enough, but it's not enough. So, yeah, pink bubbles, what could they do? <coughs> and then I said, pink bubbles go wild. And he said, no. Or crazy. And then, we said, then, then he said, or what about nuts. pink bubbles go nuts? Or banana. Yeah, it's good, but nuts is another cliche. And then we had pink bubbles go wave. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's how it came together, just, you know. It's, it's just, but it's you know, just in the like end, it. in the end, when you see the title and you see what happened and you see the songs and the lyrics in the songs, it, it fits, you know. You, you understand what it actually means, you know. Just, well, you know, you always listen gotta, to the lyrics. Yeah, it's in the lyrics. It's in the lyrics, isn't it? Got to bear in mind that even Storm understood that, you know. And he really <laughs> made something out of it. That means he, he understood it a lot better than we did because we really didn't mean anything with that. And so he finally put up certain things, you know, like, uh, well, this could be something like that. And the guy with the X on his eyes, you know, what, what he made out of it. Can you do that again? Yes, again. Yeah. Again, please. Yeah. I think that, John, did you want to change? Well, let's just do it. Yeah. Quickly, then. Yes. Same, same mark. Well, I don't think that, that there's any chapter mm. close or anything like that. I think the new album sounds pretty rough. It sounds much more rough than, than, the, than the ones in between, between Walls of Cherokee and that one. There was never a plan. I, I, th I think some of the songs on the new album aren't that different to Walls of Cherokee. It's just a, a natural development that happened. But it's not like, mm, that was too heavy. We're not doing that anymore. We just do what we want. And the next record, I think, will be much more different than the new one is to the ones before. That's what I think, <laughs> because I already have some songs <coughs> done. I'm sorry. Which called, yeah. No, but uh, I think that will be. But on, on that album and on, on the other records, we, we never really thought about, you know, we have to go commercial or anything like that. And if you're listening to a song like Bright the Sky, yeah, and compared to I'm Alive or Eagle Fly Free or Someone's Crying on the new record, you know, it's, it's the same thing still. You know, it's, it's not that it goes like diddle, It sounds diddle, better. Diddle, 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 and it is better, but it's just development, okay? And the, the first plan was actually to, to produce with Chris and Nigel Green should mix the album. That was the first plan. But Nigel Green was still working with Brian Adams by that time. And he, he, there was no end inside. So, and then he mixed it. And we're very, I'm very happy with, with how it turned out to be. We, we wanted to replace Kai just from the start, so we so we choose some a guy who is you know, able to write songs. And we wanted somebody you know you don't have to think about, 
if he can write songs and things like that. We checked him out before and it was fine. And he, so he just, he did four songs by himself. You know, maybe I did some lyrics sometimes, but the songs is, is his job. And, and he proved what he can do and everybody can hear what he can do. Listen to my songs. <clears throat> it's, 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 not, it's not like um, that he can't do it or anything like that. He, he can really do it. And he's a, he's, a, he's a very, very big gain, I think, for the band. I mean, you know, Kai has been grown up in, in this band as well mm -hmm. as everybody does. So there is, you know, some things you can, you can hear on his record which sounds like Halloween, because he was a part of Halloween and, 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 and he sounded, he was a, a part of the sound of Halloween as well, which we don't lose. We haven't lost that or something like that. But, I mean, he's just doing what he feels. So that's the same what we do, but we feel quite the same because we have been together for a while. Kids of the Century is the first song on the album. And I think we've just chosen that song because we felt like it's a good first video. It's not too wimpy, you know, it's not too heavy. It's, it, it is a bit different, but not too different, it just fits. Well, I wrote that song, I think, two and a half years ago, or two years ago. So I'm not completely in that same mood when I wrote now. That's, when, that's how I was when I wrote that song. But it, it's basically, by that time, I was pretty pissed about the young people today because, you know, they... They just care. Some of them just care about fucking money and things like that. You know, this yuppie thing and everything, and they feel like they're not responsible for anything. And that's, that's you know, when I try to remember it, that's what this song is all about, about the kids today. It was just thoughts, but it's, it's basically all the problems in there, in, 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 you know, in short things. And it's like, the chorus goes like, you are the kids of the century, we're lost in our games, the time for the memories, we live in the haze. And it wasn't our fault, everything's done, mum, we fall. And then I say, sometimes I don't want to fall. I jumped over the monitor cab cabinet and went straight in a hole. I mean, the stage were just falling. Uh, suddenly, I had no button under my feet, under my feet again, and it was terrible. It, it, it felt like I'm just falling straight to hell. And when I came out, I just felt like I had a helping hand over me. That's actually all I feel. <laughs> wow, that was lucky. Very lucky. Look at that nail. Sorry, Andy. OK, Jono, I think that maybe what we should do, uh, you may want to call it a day. Uh... The more money you spend on making a video, if you get a guy like Storm, he's pretty crazy, but very good. You know, when you get a guy like that, he's trying to do things special, and that takes time and it takes more work than it actually does standing in the forest and singing to a tree. But in the end, they look better as well, so it's worth the pain, I think. I think, you know, the band didn't really think about where to do the video. You know, the, the management just made the things up. We did, we, we did not care that much about that. So. But I think they, they choose that place and they choose England because they've got loads of professional people around that they know they're good and they just wanted to have it good without any trouble. It smells a bit like live, because it's a stage and it's live and smoke, but we haven't been on stage since two years, so we have to get back, but it's, it's cool. We don't know how it will look in the end, but we'll all see and wait. And I'll go and do it now, so I'm off, okay? Bye.